Welcome to the chilling world of scary stalker stories. I moved into a cozy apartment a few months ago, excited about starting a new chapter in my life. The neighborhood seemed pleasant, and I even had a friendly neighbor named Mr. Thompson in an adjacent unit. Little did I know that behind his welcoming smile lay a disturbing secret. In the beginning, Mr. Thompson appeared to be an amiable and helpful neighbor. He would often offer a helping hand, carrying my groceries or fixing minor issues around my apartment. I appreciated his gestures, thinking I had lucked out with such a considerate neighbor. However, as time went on, I began noticing peculiar things. It started with minor incidents, an offhand comment about what I was wearing or a mention of a conversation I had in the privacy of my own home. It appeared as though Mr. Thompson had an uncanny knowledge of my daily activities, but I brushed it off, convincing myself that it was merely a coincidence. Then came the day when I stumbled upon the truth. While rearranging my furniture one weekend, I noticed a tiny camera discreetly hidden among some decorative items. Shocked and perplexed, I realized Mr. Thompson had been spying on me through hidden cameras in my apartment. Fear gripped me as I wondered how long he had been watching me and what had he seen. The feeling of violation was overwhelming. I couldn't help but think back to the times he had entered my apartment, ostensibly to assist with my maintenance, but now it seemed like an opportunity for him to survey my personal space. I confronted Mr. Thompson, demanding an explanation for his despicable actions. His demeanor shifted from friendly to defensive, denying any knowledge of the cameras. But I knew the truth, and it terrified me to think that he had invaded my privacy in such a repulsive manner. I wasted no time. I immediately contacted the authorities and filed a report against Mr. Thompson. They assured me they would investigate the matter thoroughly. The sense of relief that washed over me was immense, knowing that steps were being taken to protect me from this dangerous violation. In the following days, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. I changed my locks, added extra security measures, and even considered moving to a different apartment altogether. The thought of living next door to someone who had invaded my privacy was too unsettling. Fortunately, justice prevailed. The investigation uncovered a network of hidden cameras, not only in my apartment but in other units as well. Mr. Thompson's true nature was exposed and arrested for his heinous actions. It turned out that I was not the only victim, and several others had suffered the same invasion of privacy. While the legal process took its course, I couldn't help but reflect on the importance of vigilance and trust in our surroundings. It served as a stark reminder that not everyone is who they appear to be, and we must remain cautious and observant even in the seemingly safe confines of our own homes. The experience left an indelible mark on me. I moved away from the department, seeking solace in a new place where I could regain a sense of security. The memory of those watchful eyes next door still lingers, reminding me to be ever vigilant and protective of my privacy. As I embarked on the long flight, exhaustion and anxiety began to take their toll. Sitting in coach for ten hours, restless and fidgety, I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease towards the man five rows ahead of me. Perhaps it was just paranoia, a result of my weariness and fear of flying, but something about him made me nervous from the moment I laid eyes on him. As I made my way down the narrow aisle, Struggling with my carry-on, I found myself stuck behind another passenger trying to fit his oversized luggage into the overhead compartment. His wife's angry curses in quick Spanish filled the air, and I looked away, attempting to control my irritation. It was during this momentary diversion that our eyes met. The man's appearance was nothing particularly remarkable. Plain brown hair, plain brown eyes, and an unassuming face that wouldn't stand out in a crowd. I couldn't discern any specific emotions from his expression. He remained indifferent, almost blank. Despite this, I offered a small smile, attempting to find solace in our shared experience as weary travelers, but he did not return the gesture. The frustrated passenger had finally resolved his luggage predicament, 
and I moved along, leaving the man behind. Finding my seat, stowing my belongings, and putting on my headphones, I tried to distract myself from the uncontrollable nature of air travel. However, being in an aisle seat allowed my occasional glimpses of the man, his fingers nervously tapping the armrest as more passengers boarded the plane. In the midst of the chaotic influx of people and luggage, I thought I noticed him turning his face, trying to catch a glimpse of me. Though he didn't repeat the action, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had piqued his interest. Yet, I reasoned that he might just be another anxious passenger like myself, seeking solace on a Brazilian beach to escape the harsh Canadian winter. Maybe I was overthinking it, letting my imagination run wild. Moments later, I realized his phone had been off for over an hour. He had been aimlessly tilting the screen, but it had remained pitch black. No headphones, no entertainment. Instead, he had been using this phone as a mirror to observe me. Panic began to seep in, but I refused to show it. I couldn't afford to appear weak or vulnerable to this stranger's unsettling behavior. Discreetly, I grabbed my purse and made my way towards the back of the plane, searching for a flight attendant in the galley. Is there a way to change the seats? I asked, trying to keep my voice composed. The flight attendant, initially annoyed by the request due to limited available seats, raised an eyebrow when I explained the situation. Oh, that guy in 26H? He questioned, annoyance turning into concern. I think there's an empty seat in the back. Please take it he offered. Grateful for the opportunity to create distance between myself and the unsettling man, I settled into the last row. The turbulence made me nauseous, but I felt a slight sense of relief, enjoying a mediocre airplane dinner and listening to light-hearted podcasts. I gradually began to relax. Eventually, fatigue came over me, and I drifted into a fitful sleep. Suddenly, my eyes shot open and my heart raced as if trying to escape my chest. The man was there, staring at me openly from across the aisle, unaffected by the slumbering passengers surrounding us. I debated whether to pretend I was still asleep, but I refused to let him intimidate me. With a loud voice filled with indignation, I asked, Do you need something? The volume attracted the attention of fellow passengers, and a sympathetic flight attendant approached him. But the man didn't flinch. His eyes remained fixed on mine as he smiled a smile that sent shivers down my spine, as if he held a secret I had yet to unravel. Before the flight attendant could intervene, the man turned and walked away, leaving me unsettled. The flight attendant kindly asked if I wanted to move again, but I doubted it would make a significant difference. The confined space of an airplane offered nowhere to run, yet I hoped there was nothing more the man could do to me. Three hours passed without any further disturbance. I remained in my seat, not daring to take any risk. As we landed, I waited for everyone else to disembark, keeping a watchful eye on the man. I caught up glimpse of his orange shirt as he exited the plane, but he didn't look back. Once I confirmed he was gone, and the hours were clear, I expressed my gratitude to the flight attendant and returned to my original seat to retrieve my carry-on luggage. However, a chilling realization struck me as I reached for it. The tag with my personal information, including my name, phone number, and address, was missing. Now, as I prepare to board the return flight to Toronto, I find myself filled with fear and uncertainty about what awaits me at home. The thought of going back is daunting for I cannot shake the lingering fear of the unknown. I reside in a small town, the kind that you can easily overlook. Our most noteworthy features are a solitary stop sign and a gas station, the latter only existing due to its proximity to the nearby highway. To experience any semblance of civilization, one must travel a good 25 miles away. Consequently, when unsettling occurrences unfold in this desolate place, they take on an amplified sense of dread. Encounters with homeless individuals are often commonplace, as they often drift through. 
drug addicts roam freely, running rampant and stealing anything they can lay their hands on. It's the unfortunate norm around here. However, what transpired a few years ago was far from ordinary. I recall being sound asleep in my bed, blissfully unaware of the impending terror that awaited me. Suddenly, I steered from my slumber, disturbed by the intense heat enveloping my room. Summer was in full swing, leaving me with no recourse but to toss and turn in an attempt to find respite. But then, an eerie sensation crept into the depths of my stomach, unsettling me to the core. I cast a glance towards the bathroom door, which stood ajar with lights still on. Everything appeared normal. I had left the lights on as a precaution against stumbling in the dark on nocturnal visits to relieve myself. My attention then shifted to the window directly across from my bed, devoid of curtains, but adorned with a shabby set of blinds. It offered intermittent glimpses of the outside world. The flickering glow of the yard light persisted. It was what lurked in the shadows that brought me to a halt. A figure, a silhouette, pressed against my window, as if patiently waiting for the blinds to sway, and granted a voyeuristic view of my room. I never possessed a vivid imagination as a child. It had been systematically suppressed. Yet the sight before me unleashed a torrent of horrors akin to those depicted in countless films. Overwhelmed by fear, I squeezed my eyes shut and buried myself beneath the safety of my blankets. Unwittingly transforming my sleep quarters into a stifling oven, by the morning's arrival, the figure had vanished. Tears welled up in my eyes as I sprinted to my mother's room, desperately seeking solace. I recounted the night's events on the verge of hysteria. Instead of offering comfort, she laughed dismissively, treating my fears as foolishness. According to her, it was probably just a stray cat that had somehow found its way to the window ledge. Though her explanation seemed plausible, considering the height of the window, something about it felt amiss. Later that day, while engaged in yard work, I cast a casual glance at my window. To my astonishment, one of our metal patio chairs had been mysteriously pushed against it. I drew my mother's attention to this peculiar discovery, only to face her scolding. She attributed the chair's position to the antics of the hypothetical feline trespasser. Frustrated, I asserted my innocence as I hadn't been responsible for moving it. The chair was cumbersome requiring significant effort on my part to handle. Nevertheless, we returned it to its rightful place, unknowingly initiating a disturbing pattern. Night after night, I would witness the shadowy figure voicing my concerns to my mother each time, and like clockwork, we would find a patio chair pushed against the window every morning. This unsettling routine persisted for several weeks, with my mother gradually growing apathetic towards my distress. However, one fateful morning, we stumbled upon a chilling revelation. The exterior screen of my window had been slashed open. I still recall the unease etched across my mother's face as she shook her head in response, grumbling about those elusive stray cats we had yet to encounter. Her disquietude was palpable. Unable to endure the torment any longer, I made the decision to sleep in the living room that night. It posed a challenge, considering the interconnectedness of the kitchen and living area, with multiple windows serving as potential points of entry. The initial night on the couch passed without incident, albeit with the discomfort of an aching back. However, four days later, our ordeal took a distressing turn. Awakening from a deep slumber, I glanced at the clock adorning my fireplace. It was revealed a little past 3 a.m. My initial confusion quickly dissipated as a beam of light pierced through the kitchen window, akin to the flashlight's piercing gaze. The luminous stream traced along the walls before setting on a love seat opposite the couch on which I lay. Fear gripped me as I relayed the unsettling occurrence to my mother, hoping for solace. Yet she persisted in belittling my anxieties. Reluctantly, I sought refuge in my father's room. Despite his massive window, his presence in the recliner accompanied by the blaring television instilled a modicum of security within me. Besides, the yard light stood just outside the window, 
further reinforcing my feeble sense of safety. Time wore on and everything appeared ordinary, leading me to doubt my own sanity, just as my mother had suggested. This is until a solitary figure emerged from the woods adjacent to our backyard shed. Confidently, the intruder sauntered beneath the yard light, gravitating towards the patio furniture as if intimately familiar with the layout. The imposing figure, brimming with self-assurance, evoked the impression of a homeowner rather than a trespasser lurking in the darkness of the night. I lay there, fixated on the flickering television screen, desperate for another glimpse. The thought of waking my father, known for his volatile temperament, on a good day, and outright terror on a bad one, deterred me. Solid proof seemed necessary before asking his wrath. Eventually, sleep overcame me, accompanied by the faint hope of witnessing another occurrence. My father would have been furious had I disrupted his slumber, and I had no desire to incur his wrath. When the morning arrived, my mother resumed her habitual reprimands concerning the patio furniture. However, a new development arose, demanding our attention. She insisted that I cease rummaging through the two boxes in the garage. A selection of tools had been removed and carelessly left on our doorstep. Screwdrivers, a large hammer, flashlights, and more. Desperate to absolve myself of suspicion, I implored my mother to stay awake with me for a single night. The garage couldn't be locked, as it served as an open carport. I refused to bear the brunt of punishment for someone else's transgressions. The incessant torment had driven me to the edge. That night, we sat vigilantly in the living room, determined to throw out my intruders. Exhaustion eventually took its toll, and I succumbed to the slumber before my mother. However, her panicked voice jolted me awake. She pointed towards the window, affording a glimpse into the garage. There, we observed the top of an individual's head as they paced back and forth. The unmistakable sound of metal tools being gingerly placed on the brick steps resonated. An attempt at silence, marred by inevitable muffled clatters. Urgently, my mother instructed me to wake my father, who, awoken by his frantic daughter in the dead of night, seized his pistol and ventured towards the front of the house where the garage stood. Echoes of my father's enraged screams reverberated through the night, punctuated by the clattering of dropped tools. The disconcerting sound of gunfire followed, a testament to my father's unstable aim. Frantically, footsteps pounded their way out of the garage. Each reverberation felt in my chest. The mother, my mother, peered through the window, hesitantly opening the door to admit my father. He had missed his mark, but he recounted an unnerving sight. A man crouching by our front door, intently studying the handle. That night, none of us found solace in sleep. Come morning, authorities from the nearby town arrived, their presence providing a modicum of reassurance. Their inquiry revolved around stolen items and description of the intruder. With little else to offer, they advised us to install security cameras. A brief interaction culminated in their dismissal, attributing the incident to a desperate thief seeking quick gains. But if that were the case, why had the tools not been stolen? Why had the generator, the welder, and the unlocked vehicles in the garage remained untouched? In response to this lingering unease, we resorted to setting up hunting trail cameras around our property. Since that harrowing encounter, nothing further has transpired. 